What up everyone? Back for another video. Changing it up this time. I've been saying for a while I'm not sure what to do when all the subscription boxes die. And then I realized that I'm an idiot. I used to do all kinds of different videos all the time. I just kind of forgot that I did them. I, I don't know. My, I have memory issues. Uh, long story short, car accident, terrible memory. I basically just forgot that I used to do these types of videos. So I thought I should be doing them because honestly, I'm out there collecting almost every day I just don't really know the best way to share it with people but I always used to used to just do these like roundup videos that talked about things I've gotten recently and I've gotten some pretty cool stuff recently at WonderCon so I wanted to talk about that the things I picked up talk about the convention in general talk about the collectible market in general and talk about some possible investment things I've been really into investments lately as far as collectibles Technically, I've always been into it, but specifically recently, I've just been watching the market and watching investment videos a lot. So that's just something I'm really into, and I'd like to share any advice I have to everyone that watches. So first of all, and obviously, if you just want to see what I bought, you can skip around. I'm going to try and put pictures at the end of the things I purchased. So if you only care about that, feel free to skip to the end. Let's talk about WonderCon in general. First of all, if you don't know what WonderCon is, I kind of forget that people don't because I'm a SoCal resident. I've grown up with these my whole life. Basically, WonderCon is what Comic-Con used to be in the sense that if you go to Comic-Con, way over the top with vendors and famous people and panels and things like that. Back in the day when I was a kid, none of that existed. I used to go to Comic-Con all the way back before it was even in the convention center when it was in the basement of a hotel. Back then, it was actually about comics and collectibles. So you could buy toys and things like that. And the reason people would go to it, it was just a great way to find really good deals. Over the years, Comic-Con evolved, and now it's kind of the exact opposite. You go there to find, like, exclusives, excuse me, and you pay out the ass for them. Like, everything there is more expensive than you would normally find it. So it's kind of the opposite. WonderCon is what it used to be. It's more about the comics. It's more about the collectibles. It does have a few panels there, so which is fine, but it's just not over the top, and there's usually not like big famous people there for the most part. So now it's a place where you can go to find really good deals. So that's what I like. That's what I've always cared about. I've never cared about... I mean, obviously, I'd like to meet famous people, but that's never why I went to Comic-Con. I went there to purchase things. I went there because I'm a collector. I went there because I'm a fan of that and just didn't really care about a lot of the other stuff they added over time. So I always psyched to go there because tickets are cheap. They're always available. The problem this year was a lot of the main vendors dropped out last minute, um, one of them being Funko, which is a huge deal. Like They're very prominent at all the Comic-Con conventions. They always do exclusives and things like that. They dropped out and a few other big name companies dropped out. So everyone was kind of worried that this wouldn't really be a good year. But that meant that other smaller companies could come in and sell things at a much more reasonable price. So I was for sure bummed that um, Funko wasn't going to be there, especially because it was already it was after we already purchased our tickets, so it was too late. So that's definitely a bummer because I always like exclusives. And when you can go to the convention, you get the special sticker for it, which always increases the value significantly. So big loss there, but I wasn't deterred too much because I was more into the collectible investment side of it. Anyway, so that's the gist on WonderCon. That's the basic idea of it. So I went and saw a ton of different vendors, so many good deals, but I, I legitimately ran out of time. I thought I would have so much time to get through all of them because it's pretty small. It's nowhere near the same size as San Diego Comic-Con or New York Comic-Con. It's like a fourth of the size, if even that. So I just ran out of time, so I didn't get everything I wanted to. But the things I did get, I wanted to share because some of them are extremely crazy rare. Some of them have a really cool backstory. And some of them are just cheap and hard to find. And that's where I want to talk about investments a little bit. If you do have these things or if you're searching for them, the best ways to get them. So let's start off with some generic stuff. These are just some blind boxes I got. But I got them for crazy cheap. They are Kid Robot Simpsons. So we have the bigger ones and we have the keychain ones. May not seem like much of anything. This was 12 bucks. This was $6. And it's like, you're like, okay, that's generic blind box prices. What's the big deal? 
these have come become crazy collectible so if you have any of the kid robot simpsons line they are extremely valuable they have gone up in price significantly and they are extremely hard to find because one they were a very long time ago and kid robot doesn't keep printing stuff they do a print run of something once it's gone it's gone they don't go back and make more which can be both good and bad it's good for collectors and value bad if you want to collect that so try i've been trying to collect these series for years now and it's just so damn near impossible people want upwards of like 30 40 dollars a figure and that's just for one if you want like the more popular characters like obviously homer bart and things like that they're even more expensive and these also have rarity so if you want to find the chase figures those are even more expensive so it's just become this unattainable thing so i wanted to let people know if you do have those they are now worth a lot of money and even though the market is in a horrible decline you can sell them and make a significant profit if you want to my suggestion is sit on them a little bit longer because i feel like those are just going to keep increasing in value the simpsons aren't going anywhere anytime soon so it's something good to hold on to and the reason this is so special is because it's figures themselves are expensive finding sealed blind boxes nearly impossible and even if you do it's always a huge risk buying from people online because you've learned from people like me you can figure out where figures are in the box take out the rare ones sell the cheap ones so you really run a high risk of buying online and automatically getting cheap figures and even still blind boxes could easily cost you 20 or 30 bucks a piece they're extremely hard to come by so the fact that i got them for 12 which i'm pretty sure was below the original msrp i'm pretty sure they were 15 bucks a piece i could be wrong on that so finding them for the original price like i don't know this is uh 2013 so 11 years later these are 11 years old that's fucking crazy i didn't realize they were that old holy shit so finding them 11 years later at below or even at msrp is crazy and this wasn't something where they just like, oh, I have one. It was an entire booth of things like that. They had full cases, crates, full of them just stacked up there and you could just pick out the ones you wanted. So that's pretty fantastic. They had tons of other stuff too, like Tokidoki and Sanrio, other kid robot stuff that's been out of print for over a decade for just regular price. And sometimes again, below the original MSRP that it was 15 12 whatever how many years ago so finding something this rare this valuable something that's accrued this much in interest at that price is crazy i was only able to get two because i'm not rich <laughs> I, I have very little money um but i and i wanted so many things so i thought i could only grab two of each kind and i have the worst luck ever because i grabbed two of the same figure and it just so happens to be the cheapest figure in the series so i had terrible luck i got lisa simpson didn't have the figure so that was cool but still two of the same one literally the cheapest figure but even she goes for like 15 or 20 dollars so still not a bad deal just bad luck and these ones i got maggie and mo so and again six bucks for these that's so crazy i i don't know what those are going for online but definitely not six dollars unless it's a very unpopular character and definitely not a sealed box so more reasons for people to go to these smaller conventions i know so many people don't care about them and just want to go to comic-con and i don't blame you i like going there too but for different reasons if you're a genuine collector and not just a reseller trying to get hot ticket items and immediately scalp them if you are actually a collector i would really look into these conventions even small ones if you're not in california every major city in every state has something go check it out you might find stuff like this um, the company, I can't remember the name of the company. Uh, oh, yeah, Fugitive Toys. So they're actually a really well-known established company. You may have seen them from eBay or things like that. They don't sell those quite that cheap online, but at the conventions, they do. So that is great. Then we got some more. blind boxes these ones aren't for value these are more for style i just really like this company the company is t turtle and if you've been to any of the major conventions especially the san diego or WonderCon things like that you've definitely seen this company they're one of those t-shirt companies if you've been to a convention you know what i'm talking about where they just have a hundred different designs of t-shirts and you pick out which one you want they're a dime a dozen they're nothing really special but they usually have pretty cool designs this one I specifically love because the catchphrases they had on them were just absolutely hilarious. The problem is, if anyone knows me, I hate buying those type of shirts because they use the absolute 
cheapest shirts. I like shirts like I'm wearing. It's fitted around the sleeve. It's fitted here. It's soft. It's comfortable. They always use the cheapest t-shirts possible. They're boxy. They're the unisex ones. And it's like, oh, I love the designs, but that shirt will never fit me. So I don't want to purchase that. Luckily, this company has branched out and started doing different blind box figures and they had pins and stickers. Usually I don't get stuff like stickers, but I just love this company so much that I, I got them and I'll turn them into magnets. And the catchphrases on them are just hilarious. I'll be showing pictures and you'll be reading them. They're just very funny and it, maybe it's just me, but they absolutely get my humor and I think they're great and I love their style. So they have two different kinds of blind boxes. They have this one that's here to slay and I actually got the rare figure on that one. Which is good because it was the rare one, but bad because that's one of the only ones I didn't want. I thought the other figures looked much cooler. Then we got these dinosaur ones, which are surprisingly tiny. Like, here's the size of the box, here's the size of the figure. Like, that's, I don't know why they picked such a gigantic box for such a tiny figure. I don't mind that they're small, but like, get a more appropriate sized box. That's so weird. But I got a pterodactyl and I think the ankylosaurus, and they have cute and adorable names: Terry, Dactyl, Easygoing, Anky. So stuff like that, where it's just like super cute stuff. They're small, they're collectible. So I really like them. So I just wanted to support this company and get some of their products. So I think they're great. So if you like that kind of stuff, you can buy T-shirts from them. And if you go to the conventions, they're very reasonably priced. Um, I wouldn't recommend buying these kind of figures online because I've seen the prices and they, and they want crazy prices. At the convention, those are just 10 bucks a piece, no problem. And if you bought a bunch of them, they'd give you a deal. The sticker sheet was like five bucks. So if you have the means, go to a convention and see them versus purchasing online. All right, next. Next is something I usually don't get. So I love going down the artist alley because I'm an artist. You know me. My paintings are up there on the ceiling. I've been to those conventions as an artist, so I totally get it. But I'm usually against um, buying prints from people like that because, one, I try to stick to original art, like getting the original copies. And because it's, it's just a space thing. Like if I'm taking up wall space, I want it to be something I've actually invested in and that's going to increase in value that I really have value for that space. Not that I don't love all these prints, but as you can see, I just don't have space for them. So not that I don't want your $5 print, I just don't want to take up wall space for a $5 print when I can have an original piece of artwork. So that being said, no disrespect to those people, but I just usually never purchase from them. But this guy's art I particularly loved, and I was going to buy a print, but then he said, I couldn't decide which one, he said, well, every single print I have is in this book, and it was only 20 bucks, and it's like, fuck yeah, like absolutely I'll take that. And I'll be showing some different pages from what he's done. His name is Jeff Victor, and he basically does these series of characters or people through time different stages which doesn't sound that crazy but the way he does it is just great he does great artwork and he also does it for actors two different actors throughout their career so i just absolutely loved his stuff specifically like his uh i saw his jeff goldblum one him as an actor through the years like it's just so funny to me great book absolutely fantastic and he said he sells his stuff at like target so he's pretty well known and i doubt target's selling this for that cheap so i thought it was a good opportunity so again usually don't buy things from those artists but it was a book so it's not doesn't take up much space and i absolutely love his stuff so if you like the artwork check him out his name is jeff victor all right then another booth i went to that had just again crazy rare stuff at a crazy price First of all, they gave me this box, this uh, 93 Marvel Masterpiece card box. I've been getting really into collecting cards lately. Not individual cards so much, but sealed product. Um, like Probably like a year or two ago, I started collecting those old wax packs. Before we have our modern day packs, they had those wax foldable packs that back when they used to put gum in the cards and stuff like that. Really love those vintage packs. I've been collecting things like that for years now. So that's just something I've done and just sealed card products in general. Things from when I was a kid, finding sealed packs of those things from like the early 90s and the 80s, really hard to come by because nobody thought of collecting sealed product back then. That wasn't a thing, nobody did that. So to find sealed product is incredibly hard and incredibly expensive. But this place had a bunch. They gave me the box. I like it just for display purposes. It didn't come with any packs in there. Just a cool box, and I have that series that I've collected, so 
I'll put that box on display gladly. So, the first ones I got were some Simpsons wax packs. The original Simpsons cards they made, this is what I mean by the wax packs, they're like folded over on the back, and they're just those like really cheap cardboard square cards. These are surprisingly hard to come by, and people usually want like 10 or 8 to 10, even sometimes higher than that, plus dollars, depending on the condition. They had them, three bucks a piece. And they had bunches of them. I would have bought a whole stack. Again, if I had more money, I would have taken so much more. But I had so many things I wanted, so I had to spread it out. So I kind of just gotten one of each of the things I really needed. But again, three bucks. And these are, what year are these? 1990. So these are. 34 years old and selling them for three dollars in perfect condition by the way just nuts absolutely insane to find that then i got some cards that i've been trying to get sealed packs for for decades now marvel universe series one the very first marvel universe collective universe card series from 1990 these are very hard to find. The cheapest I've seen them, not even in stores or something like that, on eBay is $25, usually closer to $30. They had them, tons of packs, 10 bucks a pop. No big deal. It's like, fuck. So I actually grabbed two of this one. I wanted to grab the third one, but I just couldn't spend that much, 30 bucks. But again, I want to go, hopefully they're at Comic, San Diego Comic Con because I want to buy more stuff from them because that is a fantastic price. Another series, uh, Skybox. They didn't have the Spider-Man pack. I got Daredevil. Four bucks for that. Easy all day. That's another like 30-year-old set. The original DC comic cards, like this is the first series. Got uh, Superman and Deathstroke. Two bucks a pop for these. Like that's not much more than they sold for 30 years ago. And then I got a 30th anniversary Spider-Man pack and one of the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man packs. Three dollars, four dollars. And again, if you look up prices, try to buy those online easily double and triple that price and they're usually in crap condition and they're not from trusted people and they just had piles of these like i don't know where they got them from it's that's crazy and they're selling them for prices that were almost the same as they were again 30 years ago that is nuts and i also bought this film cell off of them they had a bunch of these i'll try my best to show what the cell is it's kind of hard to show it through a picture but it's a Mickey Mouse film cell. And it's not just a, the fact that it's a film cell. It comes in this very protective case. This big, thick piece of like um, acrylic is like a half inch thick. So it's very easy to display and it's very well protected. Gives a little description on the back. But that's really cool. I think these are fantastic. These actually aren't that hard to come by. It kind of depends on what you get. Really cheap ones of like a stupid cartoon or a cheap scene, you can get them for like 18 to 20 bucks, no big deal. But if you want like a cool one like I got that has a cool picture of Mickey, those go for like 50 to 60, sometimes higher. It just depends on what it is. It really does. They were selling these all day, 15 bucks. It's like, pff, damn, absolutely. And I got to pick out which one I want. I picked one I specifically liked. And in general, I love film cells. Again, just like animation cells. They're not that hard to come by. They're slowly going up in price, but we're in the very near future going to reach the day where they just don't make them anymore. They've stopped making cartoons that way. They've stopped making actual film. Some companies will go out of their way to do that on a rare occasion, but they're very, very rare, and it's usually not big budget, big name movies. So they're very easily attainable still to this day because they made billions of them, but that number is quickly dwindling down. They're getting destroyed. They're getting thrown out. They're getting broken. People just, you know, things happen. So over time, there's, these are going to get harder and harder to come by. So to have something from, I think this is 19, 36 this is almost a hundred year old piece of film that's crazy so these are not going to be around forever so if you have an interest in these i would suggest collecting these now because i have a feeling these are going to be very investable i don't know how much they're going to go up and i don't know when that's going to be it's always tough to say but the fact that this is a dead um dead medium that's the word i was trying to think of a dead medium that so to think they're a dead medium and they've been dead recently that time limit is going to go out and these are just going to go up and up in price because these are going to be very vintage in the very near future. So if you have film cells, hold on to them. If you can find them for cheap, I would absolutely pick them up. I mean, why not? Especially if they're of something iconic. If they're of something little known, then i probably pass on them. Same with animation cells. But if you can find iconic characters in cool scenes and poses, absolutely pick them up. I can't see any reason why these wouldn't increase in value. Solid investment. 
Think about it. So that's what I got from that booth. Tons of good stuff. Again, barely above original MSRP. So that's just like fantastic. That's just so crazy to me. So the last set of things I got is where it gets really crazy. So I've been getting really into the Funko sodas lately. I was kind of against them at first because I just didn't really like the style that significantly. But then I as mystery minis are slowly getting phased out, I've liked them more and more because they kind of are mystery minis. They're basically the replacement for mystery minis, the updated version, if you will. They kind of took what Vinyl Sugar did and mystery minis and merged the two together. I don't know if any of you remember Vinyl Sugar. It was something way back in 2010 they tried out, but it's kind of the style of what they're trying to do here. Same style where it's very long skinny bodies slender faces usually and they mixed it with mystery minis and kind of created this new child so when i kind of changed my perspective and thought about it that way i started to appreciate them much more because i love mystery minis and for those of you who don't know basically it's one individual figure but each one has the chance of getting a rare chase they come in cases of six one of those is the chase so the chase is one of six so the normal price on these is usually like 12 to 15 dollars they're pretty expensive actually for one figure and then if you want to buy the chase separately that usually goes for at least 20 to 30 dollars and then 50 or 60 on up depending on what character it is and how rare it is now just they haven't done this before but just like how the funko pops had prototypes very similarly they have what's called an artist proof so anyone that's bought art knows that the artist proof is when they're going to make prints of something. That's basically the original. Something that's been personally inspected by the artist and usually touched up or painted on or whatever it is by the original creator or artist. And they say, okay, I've approved this design. This is the design that I want all these figures to be. So there's usually just one of those. Sometimes there can be more if they have to do updates, like if there's an artist proof and they say, oh, we need to make these changes, send it back, get another one. And they say, okay, this one's good. That might mean there are two artist proofs. So sometimes that does happen, but essentially there should be one or very little of them. So as you can assume, getting an artist proof of a common figure, very hard, very valuable. But they also have an artist proof of the chase figure, which are just ridiculous in price. Again, depending on what character it is, I go to these conventions all the time and expos. The cheapest I usually see them for is like $150. Most of them are in that $200 to $400 range for an artist proof chase because they're just that rare and uncommon and sought after. Online, you can find them as cheap as like $90, $100, but even still, like that's rare occasion and that's hard to do and they're usually the less popular characters. What's unique about these I got two of them. I got Slimer and I got Casey Jones. Both the Chase, both artist proofs. So theoretically, there's just one of each, maybe two. I don't know. There's no database available. What's interesting about these? These are from the personal collection of Brian Mariotti. Who's that? He was the CEO of Funko. If you've ever been to a Funko Fun Days or any Funko event, he was always the guy hosting it. He was the CEO. He's the one that created the pop figure. He's the one that did everything. So he recently resigned back in July. That's why I say he used to be. But he was there for everything. He was the CEO. He was also the face of the company. You'll recognize him from this pop figure and from a lot of other things. So if, you, if you're if you a fan of Funko or been to any events, you'll definitely know that name or know that face. This was his personal collection. And how do I know that? Because his partner, Mike Becker, I ran into him. He was there at the convention. He was um, doing like a signing or something like that, which I didn't go to his panel because, you know, he's cool and all, but I, I don't know what would I do with an autograph from Mike Becker. But I ran into him and got a picture with him. I'll show it right now. So, yeah, I got to see him and talk to him a little bit. So that's kind of backed up a lot of the things that the booth was saying. And they also had more proof and showed me different things like, yes, this was from his personal collection. So I thought that's really cool. I don't know if it really increases the value per se because there's not much way for me to prove to anyone else if I were ever to sell it. I don't plan to, but if I were to sell, there's no way to prove it without getting one of these guys into the conversation. So it's kind of hard to prove that they were from his personal collection. It's more just a cool anecdote. It's more just cool knowing that these were his personally. I'm obviously such a big fan of things they've done. So it was cool to meet Mike Becker and it was cool to 
see Brian Mariotta's collection and make purchases. And these are pretty cheap. Um, we got the pair. I think we paid 70 And then we also got two more that weren't artist proof, but the bigger leader ones of Groot. We got the regular and the chase. And these were display sample ones. So these were just... Again, that's why we got the artist proof and display ones because they were from his collection because he approved these designs. But again, these bigger ones, the MSRP on those, I think is like 45 bucks. And if you're lucky online, you can get them for maybe 20 or 30 for a common that's open. And the chase ones go for 60 and up. So got the pair of those for 60 bucks. Great deal, fantastic deal from Brian Mariotta's personal collection that were display samples. I haven't done a super examination. I don't think there's anything different. I wish there was. That's what bothered me about the artist proofs. There's no way to tell. Like, obviously it comes with the pog in there that says this is the artist proof, blah, blah, blah. But on the figure itself, there's really no way to tell. I've heard rumors from the company and stuff like that. that there is, but no one's ever found how to tell. So as far as I know, there's no way to tell the difference, which is unfortunate. I wish there was a way to show these were displays. I wish there was more of a way to show these are artist proofs, things like that. But, you know, that's just me being hopeful. I, I just think they should have done something. But you can't tell the difference visually other than the POG and other than they just confirmed their story. So I know they are, so that's cool to me. But other people, again, if I were to ever sell it, that doesn't increase the value. It just makes a really cool story. So... Pretty psyched I got to meet the, and oh, I, I don't know if I said Mike Becker was the, uh, he created Funko. I, I don't think I mentioned that. He was the creator of Funko back in 2006, I think. And then he sold it to Brian Mariotti in 2010 when they made the pop figure, so on and so forth. They're both involved in the company still. I think they're both board members. But yeah, that's who Mike Becker was. I, I can't remember if I mentioned that or not. Sorry. So those were the things I got. Rare stuff, cheap stuff, interesting stuff. Cool art, things with a cool story to it that I wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. If I had gone to San Diego Comic Con, all these same people would probably been there, but none of this would have happened. These things that were a cheap deal would have been gone, poof, day one, first hour they would have been sold out of these things because there are scalpers there galore. Everyone's just going to make money. It's like not about collectors anymore, which sucks. So if there's something that's a good deal like that, scalpers will just clear it out and immediately sell it on the streets, and it's like, fuck, that sucks. And the same thing with um, um, Mike Becker. He probably would have been there, but I wouldn't have seen him or run into him because there would have been a billion people there. And same with this uh, Brian Mariotti stuff. That would have gotten sold really quick, And or I probably wouldn't have heard the story about it because those booths, booths are so crowded. At WonderCon, it's not that crowded, so I'm able to talk to these people. I'm able to talk to Mike Becker. I'm able to talk to the people that own this booth and hear the stories of Brian Mariotti, how he got this stuff, how they got this stuff, that they give it to him, and his relationship with them. So I got to hear all that stuff, which I wouldn't have gotten any other way. So to sum up everything here, like I was saying, check out these smaller conventions. I know people don't really like to nearly as much. They'd rather wait for a big one, but now you see the benefit of these smaller conventions. And if you do care about investments and things like that, that's the way to go. You got to find this stuff cheap. So as always, if anyone has any questions about possible investments, about possible collecting advice, anything you want, you're always welcome to ask me in the comments. Let me know the stuff about the stuff I got. Did anyone else go to WonderCon? Did you pick up anything else? Let me know about those in the comments. And yeah, that's my advice. That's my advice to check out these smaller conventions. So I hope you do. Other than that, I'm going to figure out ways to do more videos like this. I'm going to keep doing the subscription boxes for as long as I can until they're totally gone. And then I'll just find out creative ways to do more collective stuff and give more investing advice and things like that. So thank you all for watching and supporting. See you on the next video. Love you all. Peace.